Sorry, I don't know what happened there. We'll just quickly do everything. Oh no. Very nice. Um, and all that sort of thing. She's very naive. She's very innocent. And yes, she is very sweet in that she is concerned about the way the men are reacting or the way like she would say is, is re re reacting to her decline of his proposal well that evening she she writes again to let us know that um, arthur has just gone and number two the proposed the, the second man has come off to lunch and he is such a nice fellow an american from Texas. Now you need to understand that the fact that he is American from Texas is important because, of course, Texas were uh, America was the colonies, and it it brings about the whole idea of uh, exploration, and uh, which was very important in Victorian England, and going out and exploring the society, the world, and the Americas were regarded as this wonderful land of adventure and opportunity uh, but they also amongst the aristocracy there was certainly um, some prejudice uh, regarding the americans and they did tend to look down on them a little bit again in terms of history do remember that quite a few of the people who went to the americas were those trying to escape a lot of the time religious persecution in Europe you also had a lot of people who went in search of gold and people who perhaps were trying to escape situations uh, in Europe or perhaps England so not always the most salubrious of people so she explains how he is so young and fresh and and in terms of that she's talking about his attitude and the way he speaks so he has the or Americans in general again uh, stoke his stereotyping that they are forward thinking that they are brash that they say what's on their mind they are unlike the reserved Victorian gentlemen and we need to be able to see Quincy um, like this because of course we need to see him and he ha sorry we need to see him in direct contrast with Jonathan and to an extent with John Seward so she talks about poor Desdemona um, as we know Desdemona is obviously Othello's wife who is killed by Othello for jeal for reasons of jealousy and the idea that saying that that Lucy saying that oh I do sympathize with Desdemona is that she's finding she's living a life of risk and danger if she in her attraction to um, Quincy because of course he is the wilder side of life he's not that civilized he's a frontier he's probably a frontier man um, and he's he's adventurous so this shows that Lucy the fact that she's even considering him or being uh, proposed to buy him implies that she's also got a wilder nature she, she likes herself a bit of a bad boy um goes on to say that mr quincy p morris found me alone now this is something that was certainly taboo because women were supposed to be chaperoned she says i'm not ashamed to say it um and again this just reiterates that she's a little bit of a flirt she's a little bit um she's not as as kind of staid and well-mannered or or traditional and we need to remember this because perhaps this is again linked to the idea of how sex and how women can corrupt society because she is the she is one of the characters who is um, controlled by Dracula she is hypnotized by him she is becomes his servant so is Stoker again implying that the, the idea that if we we don't if we we act or women act on their sexual feelings then therefore perhaps they are often associated with evil because he never seems to look at Nina in in terms of a sexual being whereas Lucy is quite 
often described as, as beautiful um, and in a way that is flirtatious. So she goes on to describe Mr. Morris and talks about how he speaks slang and says such funny things. And she portrays him in, in contrast to the way she portrayed Seward. She portrays him as this adventurer. He's exciting. He's uh, adventurous. He's a frontier man. He's you know, he's experienced danger, he's a wild bad boy, and he does not seem embarrassed about voicing his emotion. So he's in direct contrast to Arthur and to James Seward, John Seward. He's a, uh, he's a man of the new world, he's a man of action, and we find out that he tells a really, really good story. And I love the way he speaks in the paragraph where he says, Miss Lucy, I know I ain't good enough to regulate the fixings of your little shoes. But I guess if you wait till you find a man that is, you will go join them seven young women with the lamps when you quit. So interestingly, he says he's not good enough to tie her, pretty much tie her shoelaces. But if you're going to wait for a man who is, you are going to have to be waiting for the arrival of Christ. And he makes reference to the seven young women with the lamps which is which is a, a from the bible and it is a metaphor which compares a uh, woman to a uh, christ to the bridegroom and woman to his uh, the seven women to his his brides and waiting and being prepared with their lamps lit being prepared for the arrival of christ and what he's saying is then if you are don't accept me and you're waiting for someone perfect well you might as well wait for the second coming because there's nobody perfect out there and then his, his lovely use of jargon and his language whereby he compares marriage and courtship to his equestrian pursuits when he says, why don't you just hitch up alongside me and let us go down the long road together driving in double harness. Now, a modern reader could look at that and the idea of the harness being linked together um, could imply, obviously, um, it, it's, it could be seen in a negative light, but I think I think in this case Quincy is being so good humoured and that's what he knows. He knows horses and that's how he talks in a sense. So she says, goes on to say that, and she's clearly aware of, of how people regard her. And she says, I know Mina, you will think me a horrid flirt. Um, so yes, although she seems a little bit flip, flippant and self-absorbed, she's aware of her shortcomings. And for all her frivolity and all her silliness and all her flirtation, um, she's not mean. There is nothing mean about Lucy. She is just, uh, you know, she it, she makes me think of a, a somewhat vacuous girl who who really is very excited about getting married and, and loves the uh, male attention. So we we have this young woman and she's very excited about the men she's meeting and we, we we've learned of two of her proposals and then we come to her postscript and she talks about number three i needn't tell you of number three need i so we've got the third person and we've already been introduced to arthur uh, as in terms of she's already talked about him and said his name but note how she now describes him so she talks about him in a very indirect way so she doesn't she says um she doesn't go out to say he's good looking and perhaps the lack of physical uh, description and when because if you note she spent a lot of time describing seaward and she spent uh, quite a bit of time describing Morris. Maybe this lack of description implies that he is not the best looking, certainly not the best looking of the three. Um, but as I said, I think the fact that he gets on with her mother implies that um, her parents approve, or her, her, certainly her mother does. So he is a good match for her because we also find out that he is going to inherit a title and that he is a man of influence. So he's got money and he has got standing in the community. So again, perhaps that is something that Lucy is looking for more than looks. Maybe she is a little bit of a gold digger, but she doesn't come across as mean about it. OK, so we've got this idea of um, this really sweet story and she's so happy very very happy she's all excited and i think stoker is trying to remind us that we've got the whole situation the horror the stark horror and the tension built with jonathan's journal 
people and we've got this light-hearted innocence and I think the fact that we have these this juxtaposition just further emphasizes the innocence and I think that's important because Lucy needs to be seen as innocent we need to realize that there's not an evil bone in her body she is easily led and she is probably easily manipulated so when she becomes one of the undead and she succumbs to Dracula it is not because she's an evil being it is because she he is a she is manipulate malleable and Dracula can manipulate her she makes a very interesting comment at the end of her diary or her letter she says um, she's she's grateful uh, to God for his goodness because she's sent him such a lover such a husband and such a friend so my question to you is is she referring to one man or is she referring to the three so if she's got one man who is her lover, her husband, and her friend. That's absolutely amazing. That's really she. She's very lucky. It's going to be a strong marriage. However, perhaps she's talking about um, looking at all three. So then, who would be her lover? Would it be Mara Quincy? Who we know who her husband's going to be, and who would be a friend? So. Is this perhaps suggesting, if you look at it that way, that she is promiscuous? Okay, if that is the case, if she is promiscuous, then in Victorian society, her being her succumbing to Dracula would be a fitting punishment for promiscuity. Because remember, Victorian women firstly didn't think about sex, and secondly, their focus was to be on uh, being a mother and, and looking after the house. So it's quite quite an interesting idea um, I, I will leave you to mull over that we then come across Dr Seward so we've now got again another contrast we've had these two intimate gossipy lady letters which look at Lucy's romantic dilemma and obviously when we look at this as a it's not it's not so much a dilemma she's just had three guys Guys ask her to marry him, she marry her, she's had to be say no to two, and she's worried she's hurt their feelings. But in contrast to the dilemma that Jonathan's facing, it's not it's really a dilemma. But again, uh, Stoker is using con contrast. And we've now moved on to Dr. Seward's diaries, and he keeps his in phonograph. And as you can see, I've popped in a picture there of a phonograph. So it looks like what we would think now is a um a record player and if for those of you who have watched um, the movie um, My Fair Lady with Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison you'll remember he uses a phonograph now this means that the doctor doesn't have to stop and write he just talks into this so this is important because um, the phonograph is a sound recording device which was invented by Thomas Edison in 1877. So the implication here is that Stoker is really up to date with all modern technology um, and again looking at modern technology against uh, in contrast to uh, state norms and things of the East. So it's very important that we see these wonderful modern uh, inventions and about modern inventions modern for the time. But we've got Dr. Seward's serious stoical uh, diary entry, much like Jonathan, in a way, um, he's rational. But note that by not having to write it down, by having, being able to speak, he can, it's, it's a lot faster for him. And again, it's a, a record because in between his personal comments is also his work related information. So the 25th of May. This is the day after he proposed to Lucy, which was obviously on the 24th, and he's feeling down because he's been rejected. And he tells us this.
So, we, we know that he, he tells us this because he cannot eat, he cannot rest, and so he's talking to his diary instead and says, since my rebuff of yesterday, I have a sort of empty feeling. Nothing in the world seems of sufficient importance to be worth the doing. So we get the impression that he has been really hurt by Lucy's decline, and he is now going to try and bury himself in work. So it, yes, it is a, a, a way of him dealing with rejection, but it also demonstrates just how dedicated he is. It also gives us a chance to meet Renfield, okay? And Renfield is very important because he is certainly a link, a direct link to Count Dracula. So he says, um, it just describes him. Uh, firstly, he talks about uh, the fact that he's really down. Omnia Rome Vanilla Sunt. Okay, about being in the pit. hell has its price. He feels that he is stuck in the pit of hell. He is so down by the fact that he has been rejected. So again, we've got another man who perhaps not showing his emotions outwardly, but he's certainly expressing them in the form of his diary. So let's meet Renfield. R.M. Renfield, who's aged 59, has a sanguine temperament. In other words, he's got these rosy cheeks um, and he has great physical strength. So again, that's important because obviously we um, have seen great physical strength in older men when it came to Dracula. He He's morbidly excitable, so he seems to be... Um, he finds he finds the weirdest and oddest things exciting and he also suffers from periods of gloom ending in some fixed idea which i cannot make out so it's the idea is almost it comes across as a little bit manic depressive he goes up and down and gets very excitable but what he is trying to tell us is that he is concerned that rainfield is dangerous Okay, and that is his big worry. And so the introduction of Renfield, I think, not only foreshadows the social disruption and insanity which is going to accompany Dracula when he descends upon England, okay, um, but I think he also represents the idea of appearance versus reality because everyone views him as insane, but he certainly has lucid moments and he seems to be very logical. Um, I think he's also, uh, his, his position, I think he foreshadows, his, his desire for blood also foreshadows the role that Count Dracula plays, the idea, the need for blood to uh, sustain life. We then have another chop and change, and we get ourselves the opportunity to read a letter from Quincy P. Morris to the Honourable Arthur. Homeward. And this is dated the 25th of May as well. And he starts off by saying, My dear Art, Art obviously being short for Arthur, typically American, the idea of shortening a name like that, not a very British thing to do. And when you read through his uh, letter, it's, it's a very, very sweet to talk about how we fold yarns by the campfire in the prairies and dressed one another's wounds. So these two are very, very, very close. And we see this. So even before for the marriage proposals, we see these two gentlemen are very good friends. And he says, I have no hesitation in asking you, as I know a certain lady is engaged to a certain dinner party and that you are free. So he's well aware um, that Arthur has also been competing for Lucy's affections. If you note, it's quite interesting that there's quite a contrast again in um, Morris's reaction and Seward's reaction to being turned down. Down. Um, obviously, Seward really upset, and old uh, Morris seems to be able to just be getting on with life. So, I think what we need to look at here is his letter slash or invitation, I suppose, kind of unites the men and reasserts their friendship. And it's very important that we look at that because their shared adventures have taken them around the world, and there's the implication that their bond is going to be stronger than this kind of love marriage idea. They are worldly, they are adventurous, they are men who are strong, and this is supposed to be in direct contrast 
to the idea of Lucy and Mino, who are supposed to be these domesticated, cultured, educated women. Again, please remember that Mina is going to be joining these men in defeating Count Dracula. And finally, we have uh, an insight, sweet insight into um, Arthur, who is quite cheeky. Perhaps he's not handsome, but he, he's, he's quite happy to let them know he is the one who won the girl. And he says, count me in every time I bear messages that will make both your ears tingle art. So we've got this idea that no matter what, the, the idea of love and relationships are never going to come between these three men. Because in reality, when you look at these the, the relationship dynamic, if you, you're looking at this in terms of real relationships, again, remember, this is just a story. Um, it, it seems absurd that these three men could be friends and that there is no sense of jealousy. But that is the case. And I think it's about the idea of bonding um, and friendship and, and, and support being so important. Again, and if, if the bonds are strong like that between these three men, um, it's going to be very different to kind of the idea of uh, the little woman who, who can be forgotten because she's not as much a part of the adventure.